right, guys. So here is the ready build battery. Well, almost. I've got all the balance leads now fixed here in the middle with cable ties. They're all running in one string to the front. And this will be our board where everything sits on. BMS, uh, shunt, the fuse and the switch. Balance leads coming out here. And I have also received these cable lugs now from bluebarindustries.com.au. They are at the Sunshine Coast here in Queensland and it took them only one day to ship this all over. I ordered a Monday morning and Tuesday it was already in the mail. So great service from these guys. I'll link them down below and I'll link some other professional lugs here with really a lot of meat around them. Really thick ones. Industrial lugs down in the description and on my website if you are still in the market for them. And I also will link this cable here, this welding cable, which I bought from a company in Brisbane here in Queensland. Uh, if you are not from Australia, I'll link some other cable very similar or the same probably from Amazon and AliExpress if they have this. So this all sorted, I'm going to do my first crimp. I've got the hydraulic crimper here already. Put the 35 millimeter die in there and I will crimp the first 10 millimeter lug now and see how this works with the hydraulic crimper. Also, someone of you mentioned that some of these lugs, they have marks. So you can actually line up your crimping die to these marks and you know exactly where to crimp these lugs here. And, and look at these green stripes here. This is exactly what this is for. And also someone else suggested that you can actually put your hydraulic crimper just into your vise and you got both hands free. You can pump with one hand and got the other hand free to, to support your cable and cable lug. What a great idea. So easy. Thank you guys. And let's see how easy it is to get this wire into the lug. see this little window there you can see the copper is all the way to the front of the terminal and this is all good perfect okay let's crimp it oh yeah all right here's the first result that's actually very very tight wow Yeah, now you're pulling the isolation back here, but you're not pulling the, the copper out of the lug anymore. Nice. That's how it should be. 35 millimeter die, 35 millimeter lug, perfect crimp. No excess material, no little fins or something, sharp corners, nothing. Just cool. Okay, some heat shrink and we are good to go. Okay, I now have to improvise a little bit. This is still one of the cheap um, cable lugs here terminals I have. The other ones, the better ones, have not arrived yet. They were supposed to be delivered today, but today is public holiday here in Australia. So I hope they are coming tomorrow. I'll take this one as a placeholder just to cut this cable on the right length and it should be fine. And guys, also, thank you so very much for all your handy tips of how to cut a cable correctly. You have suggested putting some insulation tape around here where you cut. Uh, other people are using an angle grinder and a very thin cutting disc for it and get the perfect cut. So this was all very good and helpful. I didn't know you can just wrap this with tape very tight and the cable doesn't stray at the front. So, well, now I've got the cable cutter here. And this will be fine. There we go. Perfect cut.
right, so that's how it will look like when everything is ready and tightened. I have decided to put the switch in first because the cabling is so much easier now. Otherwise I have to go to this fuse first and then go from here into a loop and then another loop outside again. It is just too much cabling. This one was much easier to cable. And I left the cable just long enough to take this board out without disconnecting anything. I don't know exactly how long I actually sat on this chair there, looking into this box and thinking about the right order of BMS, smart chant, switch, fuse, and what to put where and how to cable this all in an optimal way. That must be days. And as always in life, at some stage, you have to make a decision. And I made the decision not to go with your recommendation of, of connecting the smart chant first and then the BMS. Well, if you have seen my last video, you know that the BMS needs the big plaque wire to actually sense the voltage of this battery correctly. And I think if I have a low resistance in between, like the smart shunt, I don't think we measure the voltage of this cell accurately. And the other point which tipped me over to make this decision here. Okay, let's say this is the smart shunt here. It sits directly here on the negative terminal. So smart shunt first, battery management, and then it goes into our inverter. Battery is all the way low, 2.5 volts, BMS turns off. Smart shunt is still alive. Many of you have said the smart shunt will now continue to discharge the battery. The smart shunt uses less than one milliamp. And I can't see this low current actually discharging the battery. But the smart shunt will be still sending the voltage of the battery to the solar charge controller, right? In the box. And saying, hey, my battery is low, keep charging, keep charging. The charge controller opens up, gives more energy to the battery, but cannot get it through because the BMS, this relay is disconnecting the energy flow. But the smart shunt still says, yeah, come on, keep charging. And from what I read in the forums, it is better if the smart shunt does not work at all anymore, if the BMS turns off. So there's no communication anymore between smart shunt and solar charge controller. And many people say this is the better way. So <laughs> I'm... <laughs> Hence the chair over there, I, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure, it makes kind of sense, but the other way around makes sense as well. I'm not sure, but as I said, I made the decision now, I connected the BMS first, and then we go from the BMS, from the C- minus into our smart shunt, from the smart shunt into our uh, cabinet here, inverter and solar charge controller. It's this decision in life. <laughs> All right, guys. So this is my connection from the outside world. A switch, positive, negative, other way. Negative, positive, is it? Yeah, negative, positive, and that's it. Box closed, done. All right, I think we are almost done. I still am waiting for these um, lug terminals, of course, these ring terminals. They should be coming tomorrow. And then I can do the final installation, but everything else, you can see the smart. This is already flashing there. So this is all connected um, temporarily with these cables here. Uh, probably shorten this one and pull it the other way around so you can't see it anymore But apart from that everything else seems to be connected. This is only hand tight So I haven't tightened any screws any bolts here and any nuts nothing. So we are coming from the main terminal down there this Okay, so this one is our main negative here from there we go to our BMS There's our B minus entrance all the balance leads connected to the battery cells. So C minus comes out here, goes in this very important loop here. Well, don't don't believe me. I, there was someone who was asking a question about this important loop and what it is about. This is only my humor, my sarcasm. So don't believe me. There's no important loop. This doesn't need to be in a loop. It can be 
anything. There's no magic loop situation happening here, nothing. So C minus comes out, goes in this cable here to the to battery minus of the smart shunt. And then we go from the uh, system minus negative from here directly out of this gland or bush, whatever you want to call it, and goes into an electrical enclosure to the charger and inverter. And on the positive side, once the ring terminal is connected, we've got the most positive here coming from the battery in a very short string of cable to the main switch. Main switch goes down in a very important loop again <laughs> into the fuse. And from there, from the other side of the fuse of this terminal goes directly out of this gland and into our switchboard to supply the inverter. All right, I think this is all we have at the moment. So this is all working. Let me see if I can connect. Let's have a look at our BMS. We've got 54.1, 5408. 5404 so 40 millivolt difference without any load this situation will of course change when we pull once we pull current through the bms and the smart shunt they will measure different voltages of course which one is correct we don't know and let's have a look at our battery voltages this is all good they are all balancing here because i have said 3.38 or something as the balance threshold at the moment and these ones are all balancing now so they will be all the same tomorrow morning i think so far i i am not leaving this foam on top of it there will be like a clear plastic like a shroud coming on top of the battery so even if you lift off the lid here of the box you still cannot touch any terminals, so this will be all covered. Um, the switch will be covered here from the positive side. This is all covered, but these ones will be open here, but I cannot see any problems. This is a negative terminal of the battery, as long as this is all covered. Maybe I build something later on to cover these terminals as well. Not sure yet. We've got the whole box situation here, and that's it. I mean, this took me the whole afternoon now. There's always so much to do, you know. You need to cut out this board a little bit with the jigsaw. I need to file it down a little bit and then crimp all these cables. And, you know, there's so much mechanical work necessary to fit this all in the box here. And this all takes so long. That's why we have five parts of building a battery now. But I think we have covered all the aspects now so far. And also in the previous videos, of course, when we discussed how to arrange these components inside the box. If you still have any questions, any suggestions, let them down in the description below. I'm always keen to read all your comments, guys. So the battery has now been built and then we can keep working on the electrical enclosure. I told you the inverter has arrived. Okay, this will come in the next video. As always, guys, thank you so much for all the support here on the channel, for all your suggestions, comments and emails I have received. You are amazing and we have collected so many good tips from you guys now in terms of cutting cables and building this battery box now and how to connect everything. It is amazing. So I guess this will be the last part of hashtag build the battery for a while. I'm sure we will go back to the box again at some stage and do some modifications, some changes or something. I think we all have done a great job in building this battery now and I'm keen to connect everything now to the enclosure, to the inverter, to the charge controller and turn it on for the very first time. I'm super, super excited. It won't be long. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. And as I always say on the other channel, stay charged. See you then. Bye bye.